heart and soul. Alternative Talk 1150. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 425 Show, your place to be for all things real estate and lifestyle related here on the East Side. I'm your host, Nicole Mangina, with Windermere Real Estate. You know, I learned long ago, I've been selling real estate for over 23 years now, that buying and selling houses is about so much more than bedrooms and baths. It's about the people and the places and the events that make this such a great place to live. And so that's what we do every week. We interview somebody from the area to find out more about what they do and help share with you something that you might enjoy here on the east side. So whether you're new to uh, the 425 area or just looking for something new to do, we've got all kinds of great stuff for you on the show today. But first I wanted to do a little real estate update. Uh, it was an interesting weekend. I was out showing client or buyers um, different houses and there were multiple offers. Both offers from the buyers were contingent which is unheard of, right? We haven't had that in, feels like a long, long time. Um, but that both buyers were contingent, meaning it was contingent on the sale of their current home. Um, they couldn't just come in and buy the house outright. They had to get the proceeds out of their current home in order to do this new purchase. And when the market has been so fast and furious, those buyers really had to sit on the sidelines because they couldn't compete against cash or other buyers but now those buyers are able to submit offers on homes and be successful, um, which I think is great. It's going to open the doors for a lot of people that have really been wanting to move up or down or whatever move it is they wanted to make, but couldn't do it because all of their equity was wrapped up in their current home. So if you're out there and you're a contingent buyer, um, meaning you need to sell your house before you can buy, there might be some good opportunities out there. If you have questions on the market, whether you're a buyer or a seller, I encourage you to reach out. You can always send me an email, nicole at nicolemangina.com. And without further ado, I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Marnie. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, absolutely. This is such a uh, timely topic, I believe. We're yeah. in January. Dry January. Dry January. And we're talking all about um, mocktails, basically, we but are. craft mocktails. Yes. Um, because there is a huge movement out there of people who take dry January into it's just dry all the time. It's a 12 month yeah. deal, right? Um, but you still want to be able to enjoy a fun cocktail, right? I have right. to admit, as you know, when it, whether it's a cocktail or a glass of wine for me, it's the whole experience of it, right? 100%. It's, yeah. it's the glass, it's the social setting, it's the fact that it tastes kind of fun. And yep. um, so you still want to be able to do that without alcohol, but. It's also nice to move past Shirley Temples and <laughs> the virgin strawberry daiquiris with the mounds of whipped cream. Yes. Which, you know, there's a time and a place for that, but yes, sometimes you want to be a little fancier. For sure. And this is your wheelhouse. This is your specialty. This is my jam. Yeah, this is kind of my thing. I um, love it. It's my story is I've been sober for 16 years and have been continually frustrated with my lack of alcohol-free options. So um, typically, if you go into a restaurant and try to order a mocktail mm -hmm. of sorts, you'll end up with your virgin daiquiri or right. virgin version of something. Um, and it feels like they're just typically geared towards our kids. Very right. syrupy and red. I, and, know. I um, do love a good maraschino cherry, though. Oh, for sure. I never did learn how to tie the knot with <laughs> my either. tongue. <laughs> so not <laughs> my talent. I'm going to yeah. figure that out. <laughs> goals. Hashtag goals. <laughs> Yeah, so I just um, have kind of resigned myself to the fact that uh, water was probably going to be what I was drinking because I'm not a big soda drinker. And yeah. Iced tea is fine every now and then. But um, I just, my husband and I were in Portland a few years ago and we had gone to a fancy farm to table restaurant that mm -hmm. I was super excited to eat at. And I thought, you know, of all places, farm to table, they're going to be creative. They're going to have something to choose from. And it just, it, it was a big flop. <laughs> yeah. The dinner was great, but the whole trying to order a drink, there wasn't anything on the menu, the server wasn't helpful. It just it, the list goes on and on and on. And I thought, man, I can't believe that at that time, 15 years later, I'm still dealing with this issue that nobody, this hasn't really evolved at all. So um, I kind of took it upon myself to try and fix it. And at that time, my goal was just really to curate the best 
mocktails that I could find mm-hmm. on the internet and share them with the hopes that people would start to make the drinks and catch on. And um, at that time, though, there weren't really that many great drinks, even on the internet. If yeah. you were to Google mocktail, a lot of what you would get was red and syrupy and with blog posts that said, like, you know, what to serve your kids at Christmas dinner kind of thing. Right. So um, I hired a recipe developer, and we just started creating some. Since then, if you were to Google mocktail, there's the movement has really started to get traction, and mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of restaurants and bars that are really trying to step up their game in the craft mocktail movement. Mm-hmm. There's so many great simple syrups. There's um, dry soda, which is here locally, is a great product to I love use. Yep. Yeah. So I think the mocktail game has definitely leveled up. I love it. Yeah, I think it's a big thing, right? There are a lot of people that want to go out and enjoy the experience mm-hmm. of a nice dinner, which a lot of times part of that is the drink that goes with it, right? Yeah. But don't necessarily want the alcohol component of it. Yep. That is one of the definite signs of aging. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In bed by nine. Sometimes it doesn't yeah. take very much. You know, one glass of wine and the next day you're like, whew, okay, I'm going to need a nap. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I think um, a lot of it is just the general experience and aesthetic mm-hmm. when you go out with your spouse or yeah. your friends and everybody's celebrating and, you know, with their beautiful cocktails or, you know, yeah. garnished and delicious. And you're kind of, you kind of feel like an afterthought when there's nothing on the menu and then, you know, you're trying to ask the server, what do you have? And they don't really know or, you know, they have soda products and yeah it just it, it feels nice to be included and kind of um, sophisticated <laughs> yeah, exactly. for lack of a better word you know you can probably serve me some dry soda in a beautiful glass and I'd be happy so right exactly I love it and so you've developed a lot of great recipes I was on your website marnieray.com right? right yeah awesome and we'll have links to all of this on our website as well after the show but you have some phenomenal recipes on there thank you if somebody wanted to go and you know try their own or they were doing a party and they wanted to have some fun options for people you've got some beautiful things on there yeah we've tried to make um some fancy cocktails that mm-hmm. are you know quite a few different ingredients or some unusual ingredients and then we also just have really simple things too because most basically we just want to encourage people whether they're at home or whether you're a bartender that it doesn't have to be complicated mm-hmm. really we just want to feel included and um, like i said if you've got um some salt tonic or soda and some bitters or mm-hmm. berry puree behind the bar. Um, you can really make a lovely cocktail and people are going to spend money for it. That's great. Do you have a favorite recipe, like when you're having girlfriends over, or something that you just love to make for We just made people? one last week. So uh, on the 17th, we had a party in Seattle over at Factory Lux. It was called the Sands Bar Party. Sands Bar is an alcohol-free bar based out of Austin, Texas. And oh, he cool. he's... Um, we were the first stop on his 16 state national tour. He's doing wow. pop-up bars all over the states. Um, and we had some dry soda products, so we made a really great cucumber recipe that's just really refreshing and easy. It's cucumber and mint and some lime juice and the cucumber dry soda. Oh, so nice. It's quickly turned out to be one of my favorites. But on our website, the one that everybody really loves is the spicy grapefruit margarita. Oh, that wow. One, time and time again, people are emailing me, asking me, where can I get the recipe, or asking me questions about it. It's so good. <laughs> really? And yeah. it's on your website? It's on the website. Okay. Yep. That's great. So, yeah, so you are doing events right now. Yep. Um, and you've got one coming up next month. We do month on February, February 19th. Yep. Okay. We're going to do a mocktail tasting and a book reading with a local author by the name of Christy Coulter. Okay. She wrote a book um, called Nothing Good Can Come From This, and she was a former Amazon exec. Okay. Uh, that quit drinking, and the book is kind of a series of essays about her sobriety experience, and um, oh, so that'll be at Third Place Books down in Seward Park, and so we'll okay. we haven't launched the registration site for that yet, but that'll be coming in the next few days. Got it. Yeah. Excellent. And we'll make sure we have it on the website as well as soon as they have tickets. Uh, NicoleMangina dot com forward slash podcast. Um, so that's great. Yeah. Um, I love that you're partnering up. And you do events periodically, right? We do. What I'm finding is that there's a real community of people um, that right. don't drink for whatever reason yeah. that just want to go out and have a good time and not have that pressure of having alcohol there. So um, I think that was the thing that was surprising to me with the Sands Bar event because we had over 100 people turn out. And I and knew yeah. maybe, I mean, I thought, you know, my friends and family came, but right. that was maybe 20 to 25 people. So. There's a lot of people that were very interested in just having a fun time without the alcohol. And, you know, my story is sobriety, but what I'm learning is that there are so many reasons why people don't drink. And maybe it's not, I don't drink forever. Maybe it's, I'm just not drinking tonight right. for, you know, whatever reason. And 
Um, so that's been really fun to hear from people that are same thing, just want to go out and have a good time and feel like they're part of the group and yeah. not have to deal with people asking questions about why they're not drinking or feeling pressure. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. I love that you're doing that. Um, and I wanted to, uh, and so you've kind of created this as a whole lifestyle in the sense yeah. that, you know, you've got all your cocktails, yep. um, which are great. I'm going to go, I think I saw that cucumber, is the recipe on your website? It's not yet. Okay. Yeah. I saw a little image of it um, when it was on your website I'll give it night. to you and you can link to it on your. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> um, I want to go home and make that because I love cucumbers. Um, but you've created some really amazing tools on your website and that I, uh, one of them I went and downloaded uh, because I just think it's the greatest thing ever. It's the Hostess Gift Guide. Yeah. So again, we will have the link um, on our website after the show, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast. But I love this. And the whole premise is, you know, what do you take as a gift right. when you don't want to take a bottle of wine? Right. Uh, and, you know, this is one of those, even if you're, even if you drink, I don't consider myself a particularly adept gift giver. You know how some people, oh, they just terrible. always... <laughs> Like, they always show up with that perfect yes. gift, right? And it's so thoughtful. It's not always big. Right. It's not always expensive. But you, they found the perfect thing for the perfect person. I'm not that person. Me either. I really admire those people. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like them because I'm like, wow, that's a talent I don't possess. Yes. <laughs> I'm a little bit envious. Uh, but you can be that person with this gift guide. Yeah. Um, because you have not only a couple different really good ideas for gifts for people, but you even talk about like, how do you put it together to make it look super cute? Cause yep. that's the other thing, right? I get it all. I throw it in some bag with some tissue paper and I'm well, like, here, it's usually the last minute for <laughs> right. me. I'm stopping along the way to get something. So yeah, same here. Same here. It's not that I don't love the person. I, it's just, it's something I don't feel confident in. And so I put it off to the last minute and then I, anyway, but um, I'm feeling a little better about myself with yeah. this gift guide. Oh my goodness. Everybody listening to the show needs to go download this gift guide. It's seriously the best thing ever. Uh, there's some really adorable things in here. Again, you talk about how to package them. And then you even have little tags little people can cards. print out. Yeah. Right? And then you come out and you put them with your gift and you're going to be the head of a party. Just trying to make it easy for everybody. Oh, I so appreciate that. Grabbing a bottle of wine is so easy when you're going to some, you know, an event for yes. your hostess. And it's just it's nice. Um, not everybody drinks. so Yeah, but even when they do, I feel like everybody brings a bottle of everybody wine. Everybody brings a bottle so, of wine. So, you yeah. know, it's nice, and yeah. I do love it when people bring us wine, but um, I think it's great. But when I give it, sometimes I, I feel like it's... It's the token gift. It's the it's token like, gift uh, of, like, I didn't know what to do, so yeah. I went to our wine cellar and I grabbed something. <laughs> yeah. It's nice, but, you know, it's not super thoughtful. Right. Right. Agreed. Yeah. So, um, anyway... You got to get this gift guide. I'm telling you, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, we worked really hard on that right before the holidays just because we're always attending so many events during yeah. Christmas. But it's really good any time of year. Oh, my goodness. You could use it for all kinds of different things, like yep. birthday gifts, hostess gifts, all kinds of things. Yep. So uh, thank you for putting that together. You're welcome. Now I'm excited. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who I can give a gift to. <laughs> no excuses, right? No. I am armed and dangerous. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Perfect. And so where are you kind of going with your mocktail movement? You've got your events, you've got your recipes yep. that people um, kind of what what else are you doing with this? We our goal really is to educate and empower both sides of the bar mm -hmm. on why it's important to have alcohol free uh -huh. cocktails. And I always kind of laugh a little bit when I say that because it sounds like such a. Uh, first world problem <laughs> you know it is it's just, but it's still I something feel left that out because I don't have a drink um, <laughs> but it's what I'm finding is that it's a valid conversation it is you know remember when our gluten-free friends were yes. when that was a thing and we're like well you know we're going to dinner but I don't know what to order because I can't have this and I can't have that and it yeah. turns into this big awkward thing when they're trying to you know order from the server mm -hmm. it's very it's a very similar situation yeah so I think the movement has definitely taken hold though and people are kind of educating themselves on what's available to order. And I think bars are doing a, a better job of right. giving options. I think that's one of the biggest challenges is you, when you're out, if you look at the menu, you know, many times you'll get a cocktail menu that has like 15 cocktails on it, but there's nothing alcohol-free anywhere right. to be found. Or it's, you know, the bottom right-hand corner and it's, you know, Pepsi products or something. Right. Strawberry so, lemonade. Yes. <laughs> so I think they're discovering that if there's at least something on the menu, you know, it mm -hmm. just alleviates a lot of that awkwardness and um, gives people options. So um, we are working to develop an app and a directory mm -hmm. of bars and restaurants that um, are doing a great job of serving uh, craft mocktails. Just for instance, um, I'm heading out of town to down to California in a couple of days. My husband drinks. I don't. 
I would love to be able to go somewhere and look and see where we can go out for a nice dinner where I know I'll have some options. Right. So um, we're kind of serving that market in hopes that um, far as the hospitality industry will catch on that this is really a need. Absolutely. Are there any places around here that serve good mocktails? So Calypso Restaurant down in downtown Edmonds. Okay. Um, Mike and Jen, the owners there, they actually have a full alcohol-free cocktail menu. Oh, wow. Um, that's been Marnie rated, <gasps> stamped with my, <gasps> my approval. I love it. <laughs> They're really good. Um, there's a couple here in Seattle. There's Poppy and The Nest. And then I'm really excited. I want to try Navy Strength, which is a new bar. Okay. Um, that I've heard they're doing a really good job as well. So, um, like I said, I think it's starting to become a real trend. I just saw a video um, online the other day about a fancy restaurant in New York that they're off. They're charging like fourteen dollars for these mocktails, and of course they're beautiful and yeah, you know, eight ingredients and smoking sage and you know the whole thing, yeah. which I think is really fun. But I I think we're looking more towards we just want something that looks great yeah. and tastes good and you know makes us feel like we're welcome at your bar, right? I love to know. I love knowing that the nest has them. I haven't been to the nest yet, yeah. But I'm feeling I, I'm missing out, right? Especially last summer, everybody was posting their, you know, they're out on the nest, nest. and it's <laughs> high, and they got their cocktails. I'm like, I need to go there. Yeah. So now I have another reason to go there. Right. I can go and check out their mocktails. That would be fun. Yeah, I've heard they do a really great job. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. I think this is amazing. I love that you're doing this. It's been really fun. It's been eye-opening for me. I, um, you know, I'm 51 years old, and I just assumed that my market was going to be the same age group, you know, 50-year-old mm -hmm. women. And I'm I'm pleasantly surprised at how many young, uh, like, college students that message me frequently. And that makes me happy as a mom to just right. know that at that age, you know, their kids are, are paying attention to consumption so. yeah I think there's a lot of kids like that I know uh, a good friend of ours their daughter's in college and um she doesn't really drink I don't think she really drinks at all right and so it's kind of an awkward time yeah because everyone wants to go to these parties and it's it's hard right yeah. you show up and so um you know to have something that kind of made her feel like you're at least part of it right I think would be nice yeah most definitely yeah it's been really fun that's great so perfect. Uh, so we talked about Calypso. Yes. Um, and the nest, you said. Yep. What are some of your, your you live over on, in Kitsap. Right? I'm in the 360. Yes. I, that's okay. <laughs> we love that. We love all area codes. We are equal opportunity area codes here. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a couple of really great restaurants over there. There's a farm to table restaurant right in Kingston called Mossback. And okay. They come up with some amazing uh, craft cocktails. Okay. Alcohol free. And then there's a brand new one in Pulseville called Crabtree Creek. Crabtree Kitchen. Okay. And they also own a business called High Spirits, which is basically a liquor store. Okay. And they have just been a huge supporter of the alcohol-free movement. They've built their business um, on a community basis. They just really mm -hmm. want people to feel a part of a community. And um, so they don't want to exclude anybody. So they have just an amazing selection of alcohol-free mixers um, in their store. And they have a great menu on their uh, at the restaurant as well. Oh. Good. I'm going to be over there next month. So, uh, oh, check the, them out. Yeah, yeah, sure. Really Very cool. Really proud of our 360 people. There's another bar in uh, Bremerton called Honor Bar. They mm -hmm. do a great job. So, okay, great. Yeah, got lots of choices. Great. And what are some of your favorite things about living in the Northwest? Oh, my gosh. On Bluebird days like this, I cannot think of a better place to be. Oh, yes. Well, and before the show, we were talking about the weather in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's negative 50. Yeah. No, thank so, you. So, and it's sunny and beautiful here. 37 feels pretty balmy I'll take it to negative 50 I will take it and I love those Olympic mountains I oh, look no. at them every morning from my kitchen window and I, I the beauty here is really unsurpassed and, yeah um where we live over in Kitsap we are, have access to you know the Olympic National Park so we have mm -hmm. so many amazing hiking trails and kayaking and paddleboarding and it's just a very outdoorsy kind of environment. It's beautiful over there. We were over there, I think it was two years ago with the kids and did a bunch of those waterfall hikes. Yeah. They're everywhere, right? Yeah. Which is wonderful. We had yeah. so much fun just kind of chasing around the whole peninsula. Yeah, there's a lot the waterfalls. of waterfalls. We had uh, just had a dinner meeting last night with some clients from Iowa and um, I love it. they were talking about how they just can't get into the seafood because it's not what they have. Oh. It's not what they grew up on. And I thought, man, you are missing out. <laughs> I think that's probably one of my other favorite things about living where we do. Yeah, absolutely. There's all kinds of neat things. There. That's funny, Iowa. Yeah, I don't know what they... A lot of steak. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, do they get seafood there? I Not really. Not so much. No, <laughs> not so much. 
That is wonderful. I'm excited for your guide to come out with different places um, yeah. that people can go for sure. Me too. We've had a really great response to that. Um, you know, there's people that just want to go out that don't feel comfortable in an, an environment that mm -hmm. has alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who are fine with it. They just want to have something to, you know, to choose from. And um, so I think we have enough options now that people need to know Mm -hmm. about the people in the hospitality industry that are doing a really go a good job of supporting it. That's great. And I, th I would think that the hospitality industry really wants to. Um, you know, I know I have various dietary restrictions, and every any time I call a restaurant, you know, I've had instances where we're going for a big thing, and I'll yep. call ahead like, hey, I don't want it to be weird, but this is what I got going on. They you know, Usually they will go over and above and make me just something really spectacular. You're like, yeah. really, I would have been happy with, like, kind of a salad, right? Just something, yeah. right? Like. You know, um, but they always, you know, want to put their all into it and stuff. They and do. I always uh, so appreciate that. That's a great tip, too. To yeah. Call ahead. My daughter's down in Portland, and her company had their Christmas party at a distillery, mm -hmm. and she doesn't really drink. And so she, she called me, and she's like, I don't know what to do. Do I not go? I said, just call ahead and just ask them, yeah. do you have, what are your options? And, you know, if they have none, then maybe you can consider what you're what you're going to do but yeah most places will go above and beyond to make you feel yeah um and i think sometimes they kind of like it right it's like a little challenge and yeah they can figure some fun out a lot that's really fun when you can find servers and bartenders that take it take it as a challenge and really come use their creativity to come up with some great things it doesn't always work that way right Every now and then you'll like my experience in portland i ended up with a virgin mojito with no mint which was like what i told him i didn't want and that was he kind of just it's what they had, so that's what he gave me. So oh. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have instances yeah, sometimes where you get the wrong person on the wrong day. Yeah, or exactly. They're having a tough time. And... So we just try and teach people if there's nothing on the menu, here are some things that you can order or you can ask for, right? Um, to try and help that situation along because sometimes the servers don't know either. So yeah, they don't because um, they're just not used to thinking yep. that way. Exactly for sure. Yep. Cool. Well, I'm excited to go check out some of these restaurants. We got all kinds of it's research and development. The I know. Part of my job. I bet, right? <laughs> okay. And we will have links to all of these restaurants on the website after the show. If you're just joining us, we have Marnie Ray with us on the show talking all about the craft cocktail, mocktail movement, not cocktails, mocktails. Um, because I really do believe more and more people are deciding that, you know, just the alcoholic drinks, is, it just doesn't work for them for whatever reason. Right. Um, but you still want to go out. You still want to have fun. You still, if you're throwing a party, part of that feeling like the hostess is, you know, having a, some kind of fun drink. Exactly. So, and you've got lots of great webs or, uh, recipes on your website. We do. Yep. Something for everyone. I know. <laughs> so we'll have links to all of that on the website after the show, NicoleMangina.com forward slash podcast. So, um, so you like the, um, the Pacific Northwest, we were talking about being over in Kitsap and just that it's so outdoors. Do you guys have any favorite hikes or do you guys ski? Or what Yeah, you my favorite there? hike is Mount Eleanor. If okay. you're ever over there, it's it's a tough hike, but uh, the views are beautiful. And the, the mountain goats used to be up there. Oh, no but way. They've, they've since been relocated to oh. eastern Washington, I think. But Oh, yeah, that was a bummer. cute. <laughs> How long is the hike? Uh is it six miles round trip? Okay, it that's not It may not even be that, that far, but it's very steep. It's a definitely a more of an advanced hike. Uh, Mount Townsend and Mount Walker are also really good hikes over there, too. Oh, good. Lena Lake is one of my favorites. It's a six-mile round trip, and right near there is Hammett Hammett Oysters. So you do your hike, and then you go down and you have oysters on the beach and beer or soda and sit by the bonfire. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and your kids grew up over there, right? They did. I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did. My kids have grown up over there, and um, they don't really know any different. We eat oysters on the half shell. They're just, they're outdoors. It's kind of what we do. So <laughs> I love it. That, what yeah. a great way to raise your kids. That's yeah. amazing. And we spend a lot of time in the summertime over in the Antioch Reservoir on the Columbia River. So oh, yeah. we do the water sports all summer mm -hmm. and then the hiking and things in the winter. So it's, you got it all here. I know that's one of the things I love about living here. You really, I mean, you've got the mountains, you've got the trees, the water, all of that. And then you can go east of the mountains. Yeah, and it's like a different place altogether. Oh, it's a whole different world over there. Yeah. And I just love that. Yeah. Um, I actually like that drive through eastern Washington on I-90 and yeah. going up to Chelan and stuff like that. I think it's so pretty. It is. It's beautiful. It's just one of the more reasons why we love it so much here. I, You know, we spent a lot of time down in California and Big Sur, and mm -hmm. those are beautiful areas, but... I just don't think anything compares to what we have here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like pretty California lucky. for vacation, but yeah. I think for daily living, nothing beats the Northwest. Yeah. So, um, which for me is saying something, because I actually grew up, my dad was in the Air Force, 
So oh. we moved all over. I had never been west of the Mississippi River till we moved to Washington. Wow. So it kind of hyperventilated. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big move. I'm like, well, I think it was way up in the corner. What do they do there? <laughs> like, I don't know that this is going to end very well. <laughs> Well, we're glad you stayed. Yes, me too. I love the Midwest. I will always be a Midwestern girl at heart, but um, I kind of like living in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the place to be. Yeah, for sure. Agreed. So, um, and we have a, and we've got a strong real estate market. So, uh, yeah, it's it's just interesting to see how everything's been going. Like I said, we've been talking about mocktails today with Marty Ray. And uh, the latest in the real estate market, as I said at the beginning of the show, we're starting to see a lot of buyers come into the market that have been sitting on the sidelines for the last couple of years. Lower down payment buyers, you know, that are approved. Uh, one of my recent sales, we had a buyer that was only 5% down, which is really interesting because um, they were pre-approved. They're ready to go. Really, really good solid buyers, uh, but they couldn't compete in a faster paced market where things were selling with multiple offers. Everybody's waiving their financing contingency, which when you do that, it means if the property doesn't appraise, you're on the hook for the difference. Well, if you only have 5% down, you probably don't Yikes. have the cash to cover the difference. Yeah. Um, so those buyers are back in the market as long as well as the contingent buyers. Uh, and I'm really, I'm, I'm excited for the whole market, but uh, especially for those people that I know have been kind of chomping at the bit, wanting to do something, um, but didn't feel like it was the right time. So it'll be interesting to see how this year shakes out. But I think we're off to a strong start. We're definitely seeing things sell. Um, but uh, the, all the parameters are a little bit different than before. So again, if you've got real estate questions, feel free to send me an email. Nicole at NicoleMangina.com. We can certainly set up a time to chat or be sure to check out the site after the show and we will have links to everything. Marnie's website, you can get her awesome hostess gift guide. I'm telling you, it will change your life. <laughs> um, along with different recipes for cocktails and then links to the different restaurants that have uh, great mocktails on their menu already. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you next week. Bye. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guest, and callers, and not necessarily.